So these thumbnails all pretty much boil down into two or three things. A section of some map that is blurred in a way to give off a depth of field effect. Another being a view model of what is usually a wonder weapon or a starting pistol. And the starting pistol is usually in a mid-reload animation where it's just idle. And optionally, text and or images of whatever. Typically for, you know, that extra clickbaitiness, they like to put in a round 100, the, specifically the one from Black Ops 3 in. And uh, I'm pretty sick and tired of seeing these thumbnails everywhere. So, uh... The best thing to do, obviously, is to show you how to make one of them. So that's what I'm going to do. And it should be known that this obviously doesn't go for every single thumbnail made for a Call of Duty Zombies video. That would be ridiculous. Anyways, let's just figure out how to make one of these thumbnails, shall we? So what we're going to do is we're going to get into Black Ops 1, and we're going to get on Kino Der Toten to get one of those background screenshots. Now, since I typically play on a laptop, I always have my graphics settings turned down and the resolution, which, you know, impacts frame rates the most. So, since we're going to have to have this screenshot look as amazing as it can, we're going to have to turn up everything. We're going to have to turn up anisotropic filtering, we're going to have to get the resolution up, and we're going to have to get anti-aliasing turned up all the way, which hurts frame rate the most. Oh yeah, and I probably should get these shadows turned on and shader warming. Never heard of that before. Anyways, let's just get into Kino. Oh, come on, what is this? I need to get 20 videos out, okay? And I need thumbnails for each and every one of them. And starting with my first one, I need to get a background screenshot. I don't need anything wasting my time. Alright, so this probably isn't going to fix itself. I'm just gonna get out of the game and go back in. Okay, so now we're back in Black Ops 1. Oh, come on! Really? Fine, I guess we're gonna have to wait it out. Okay, so now we're officially back. Let's find somewhere that people will most likely recognize. So, the obvious answer is the MPL room! No, I'm just kidding. Of, of course it's going to be the theater. What else would it be? Alright, so I think the best and most iconic part of the theater is probably the teleporter. And what is that iconic? You know what, forget it. I think it'll probably look better with the power turned on, and it'll probably look better if we activate the entire thing. So we should probably do that. Alright, so now we got a screenshot. Let's go ahead and get GIMP opened up, and yes, I'm using GIMP because screw subscription services, first of all. <laughs> Adobe. It's Adobe, in case, you didn't, in case you didn't know. On my first try, I had a screenshot of the ray gun that I took in this barricade, just because I figured I could cut it out and use it as the view model. But, uh, go figure, the room was too dark, and it made the ray gun look like crap. Plus, manually cutting it out was way too boring, so I just went on Google and I nabbed one from the Call of Duty wiki. Thanks a lot, guys. I also used the standard Gaussian blur for the background screenshot, and I also added a white drop shadow on the ray gun, because from what I've seen, people like to do that. And this doesn't apply to Call of Duty Zombies thumbnails. Everybody likes to have drop shadows in their thumbnails. Alright, even I'm guilty of this, and I'm critiquing thumbnails, so take some notes or whatever. Now, because I was looking at Tim Hansen thumbnails for inspiration, I decided that the blur was just a bit too generic for our generic fake thumbnail, so I decided to use rotational blur instead. But before I did that, I also realized that the view model of the ray gun didn't take up 50% of the screen, and scaling it up just looked like shit, so I figured I'd use the thunder gun instead. I also decided to run it through an AI image upscaler just to be safe on the quality. By the way, I never used that upscaled image. Also, instead of using an ugly white drop shadow, I went with a fancy orange one because, you know, the lights on the Thunder Gun are orange and, you know, I'm a pretty huge fan of Half-Life and Half-Life is orange. So yeah, it just kind of works itself out naturally. So on to the final part, which is that optional text and or images I said in the intro. For this one, I wanted to use the round 100 thing from, you know, Black Ops 3 because everybody else likes to do that. And getting this text was 
kind of hard because the only screenshots were from in the game. But after like seven minutes of searching, I ended up finding one that looked pretty good. But unfortunately, it wasn't transparent. So that means that I'm actually going to have to put in a bit of effort for once. AKA just using the color to alpha tool and, and cropping it and scaling it down a bit just so it fits the thumbnail. And I didn't use a drop shadow on it, even though it was really, really tempting. All right, so now you know how to make a proper Tim Hansen approved zombies thumbnail. Now with this, you should probably be a bit creative with this one, you know? Add a trillion lightning effects with it. Have enough lens flares to make even JJ Abrams jealous. But I mean, at the end of the day, this is your thumbnail, so you do whatever you want with it and make sure to have fun with it because well, that's kind of why I'm doing this video. It's just because I thought it would be fun. Speaking of which, it's the end of the video, so, you know, like, subscribe, comment, and hopefully I will see you all next Friday or sooner.